We are fresh back from the getting these nice things photocopied in a color laser jet. And now we need to transfer to our very fancy copper clad circuit board. Uh, you can get this stuff online in bulk. eBay is the place to find this stuff. Um, this is FB4.03 seven maybe or three eight or either point oh four two this is fairly thin but ideally you might even want circuit board that's even thinner than this for um, cutting it because you will need to cut your circuit boards at some point and first we're gonna use this exacto paper cutter to make the mask paper a little smaller so it'll fit and you just kind of align it, hold it down. Watch where you're cutting so you don't cut off a chunk of your nice ink. Paper cutters are very handy. Uh, this one you can pick up for about, I want to say they're 60 to 70 dollars at Staples. So now, this is going to go onto the circuit board in such a fashion. As you can tell, we've got a little bit of a chunk left over. And what we can do is save that chunk. Draw a line, an erasable marker. Take this off. Align this. And it helps when you hold this down so it doesn't move. And voila! Nice chunk that fits our design. You should probably use a dust mask if you have one. And you should have your safety glasses on. Like so. Alright, so now with the use of this sander we will quickly with about 400 grit sandpaper do a little bit of pass over this and this is probably good enough um, we kind of just want the top protective layer, sand it off. This may be a little bit too much, but it'll be fine. With the use of some alcohol, <laughs> rubbing alcohol, um, you would clear off the top of this from smudge marks and oils left by your hands as you're touching it, and also excess copper sand. Now we have to run through this, you know, we have to run this through the laminator. So you actually run it through without the sheet on the first time to heat it up? Yeah, you could do that. Never ever use acetone to clean up the copper because the, this top sheet will not stick to it. And actually you shouldn't use acetone at all. Um, rubbing alcohol is probably all you will need. And this is um, a standard laminator. I do recommend getting them wider and so they can get sheets through that are even thicker than this. Although anything thicker than this is kind of hard to cut with the paper cutter. You need a special shear which are very expensive. Alright, so then you would align the sheet with the copper board obviously face down with the mask because that's what can get transferred and holding it down, make sure the laminator picks up both sheets at the same time. And try and smooth it out so there's no bubbles the first time. And if you're making one or two circuit boards, the, so uh, the, the clothes iron would be okay, but when you're making more or bigger ones, you do want to get a laminator because it saves you so much hassle and it's so quick. Alright, so the first time through, the top layer, which is the mask, should stick on. 
However, we do want to run it through several more times and you can flip it over and send it through again. Ooh, the crackling isn't good. No? But it'll be fine. Is that the mask separating from the front? or? Yeah, it's just peeling off so it didn't get stuck all the way. Because it expands when it heats and then when it cools it contracts so mm. it's just scraping some parts off. This will be okay. How many total times do you run it through? Maybe five or six. This is a good transfer paper. Alright, once this is through, flip it over one more time. It's going to be hot. Let it go back in. Alright, so this is done, and we let it cool. You gotta let it cool for a little bit, um, right after it's done baking in the laminator. Is it still hot? Just a little bit. So it's done. How hot does it get in the laminator? Very hot. It will burn your fingers if you touch it. Alright, so here's where the magic happens, and if you want to watch this, right here it's probably... Um, just maybe an inch or so of water when you're doing this. And when it's fairly cool, just submerge it. absorb into the paper. So it's important to let it cool because you want the toner to adhere correctly? I, I think so. That's the step that I've been taking. You might be able to just throw it in, but it seems like letting it cool is a good idea. Just it doesn't take very long. Let it sit for a second. This is a big sheet. Smaller sheets might slide off quicker. So you're actually waiting for it to slide off mm -hmm. on its own accord? Yeah, just about. You shouldn't have to do anything. But it has to get soaked in first. Oh, there it is. Voila. And that's... That looks really nice. Yeah. So, let's take a closer look at that. Here, I, and um, I usually just dry it off with a towel. But yeah, we can bring it towards light here. Right. Yeah, looks like we don't have to fix anything, just about. There's a little bit of a ding here, but that's not bad. Mm-hmm. Some letters kind of cut. The edges are the most problematic parts, but it seems like the center is good. Yep, yeah, and there's a circuit board full of uh, masked copper ready to be etched.